Hi, this is Paul Haar from the saxophonist.org, and I'm here with a play test and review of the Soul Machine from West Coast Sax. <laughs> You know, since the late 1960s, what I call <clears throat> high wattage mouthpieces have been around in all various shapes, sizes, and forms. And they have a lot of different names. For example, Runyon, um, Gardala, uh, Dukov. These are names that have been uh, formidable in the world of what I, again, I call high wattage mouthpieces. And that's mouthpieces that have baffling in them uh, to be able to give more power, edge, and projection. Uh, so when Matt Lee contacted me and said, I want you to, to review uh, the new Soul Machine, I asked him, well, what is it? What is it about? He says, well, it's a sexy, powerful, colorful, edgy mouthpiece. And I thought, okay, this was a vast departure from the throwback that I reviewed a number of issues ago. And I said, well, can you give me a little bit of background just to get an idea? He says, well, it's more powerful than the King Gardala. Um, but it has more control and edginess and power and subtlety uh, and it's got a scoop bullet baffle like a Berg and rails like and I was just I had to try it so he sent me one in a size 108 this is uh, he offers two sizes a 108 and 113 so if you're one of those people who likes five stars and sixes this isn't gonna work for you uh, and I have to say that this is probably the most powerful mouthpiece that I have ever played. Now when it comes to high wattage mouthpieces for me, uh, or high baffled mouthpieces, it's often feast or famine. Uh, generally famine. Yes, they give you uh, projection and power and edge, but they give you little room for control, flexibility, and the low end. Just pray to God you don't have to play anything in the low end because it barks like a dog. This was a vastly different experience for me. Um, this is not a mouthpiece, let me first of all say that for the type of jazz that I play, or the type of music that I play, that this would be a mouthpiece that I would typically gravitate towards. But I'm educated enough to know what a good mouthpiece that has baffling um, should entail. And I have to be honest with you, playing this mouthpiece took quite of an, a, an adjustment. And it wasn't anything that was wrong with the mouthpiece. It was dealing with the preconceptions of over 35 years of playing, of when a mouthpiece plays with this much projection, you're going to sacrifice this around middle G or low G. 
up, you're going to sacrifice this down low E, low D, low C. You're not going to be able to attack these things. And so I instantly started to compensate for problems that this mouthpiece didn't have. Um, I will tell you, um, this is a crazy mouthpiece. Uh, first of all, aesthetically, this is beautiful. Um, this is not silver. This is actually brushed bronze. And um, I thought it would perform a little bit brighter, but it's actually a darker sounding metal. Um, it has a the whole thing is well machined. It's it's CNC machined on a five axis machine. Um, all the lettering, uh, the rails, everything is flat as a pancake, a flat table. Uh, the rails are razor thin, remind me very much of a Gardala, um, with the tip rail just being absolutely precise, and it fits the reed well. Uh, as far as success that I had with reeds on this, I had a tendency to go towards the more medium, medium, soft Lavoise. Uh, the, the too hard, um, unfiled uh, Diodario, uh, or some uh, red Java 2 threes. If I got too hard in the reed, it started to bark a little bit. Um, it performed very well. Actually, my favorite reed to use on it was um, uh, a three or a two and a half, or I think it was a 2.75 Legere signature. This is a very, very good mouthpiece. If what you're looking for is power, brilliance, projection, and color. Now, one of the things I will tell you the way my ears work, when I hear things that are extremely bright, they have a tendency to have a richness when I listen out in front of the instrument. That's just the way my hearing has developed as I age. When I first tried this mouthpiece, I thought, ooh, I don't know. And then I heard the recording, and I was so impressed by the focus, yet depth that it had in its projection. Um, if you're going to be doing any funk, smooth jazz, rock and roll playing, this mouthpiece is going to allow you to not only have that wattage and power that you're going to need to compete with other um, electronic instruments or soundmen who like to turn you down. Um, this is going to be a mouthpiece that is actually going to make you sound good, not just loud. Um, it comes with a H ligature and cap. And uh, I will tell you, though, this is on the bright side. Uh, um, of, of the spectrum. Again, what I said, it is the more, probably the most powerful mouthpiece I've ever played. You'll want to check out the uh, photos on the online review. It has an incredibly high baffle and then a deep scoop into a medium chamber that's bullet shaped that reminds me very much of a Burke Larson. But right before that is just ever slow, so slightly uh, a little rollover. Um, I'm just constantly amazed when I test mouthpieces like this, how people come up with new things to get new um, new sounds. This is, if you're in the market for a, a, a high-powered mouthpiece that's going to allow you to achieve your sound <clears throat> and not give you all the headaches that you've experienced, this is certainly a mouthpiece that you want to check out. Now, this is not for the faint of heart. This sells for about $600. So if you're thinking that a mouthpiece is going to, if you pay that much for a mouthpiece, uh, this is going to give you the sound that you haven't had. Um, you're crazy. No mouthpiece. Matt's good, but he's not great. He can't make a mouthpiece uh, that's going to give somebody with a bad sound a great sound. This is just going to make the sound you have a lot more brighter, uh, project more. So if you don't have a sound concept, this is going to make you really, really annoying. Uh, but if you know how to play a mouthpiece like this, if you have a sense of what a mouthpiece like this can do, it is an excellent, excellent investment. So be sure to check out The Soul Machine uh, from West Coast Sax. And if you want to check out other reviews, interviews, and educational features, be sure to check out www.thesaxphonist.org.